On the 18th of December 2025, the clock marks the final 24 hours. A global, almost electric anxiety permeates the entire astronomical community. The countdown to December 19 is coming to an end. The day when the interstellar object 3i Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth. For months, the message has been clear. Don't look! It's just a rock, an insignificant chunk of ice and dust. But the voice of science has changed. Today, the data revealed something that defies all previous expectations. Welcome back. We are about to unveil the new information that just arrived at the servers. Data that radically alters our understanding of this enigmatic cosmic visitor. Keep your notifications active because the next few hours will be critical and every detail will be crucial. The big revelation? A new preprint article has just been released on the R's server with an intriguing title. The anti-tail of 3i Atlas oscillated before perihelion. Anti-tail, the very word sounds like something out of a science fiction novel. And indeed, in astronomy, it refers to a phenomenon where a comet's tail appears to point toward the sun, usually an optical illusion caused by perspective. It's a rare phenomenon, but conceptually understood. However, what we're observing now transcends any illusion. New data, verified by a team of independent scientists and confirmed by ground telemetry, indicates that 3i Atlas's anti-tail is not a mere play of light. It's a physical structure, and its magnitude is impressive. Stop and think about this. The most recent measurements reveal that this feature extends for more than 400,000 kilometers, a distance greater than what separates us from the moon. It's a massive trail, whether of material or something completely different but the size alone is not the smoking gun. What really shocks is its movement. Comet tails are passive by nature. They're formed by dust and gas carried by the solar wind. They flow, yes, but they don't oscillate. The article details a series of rhythmic and precise oscillations detected in the anti-tail moments before the object reached its perihelion. These weren't random fluctuations. They were almost mechanical. Imagine a ship's wake. It curves and sways as the vessel makes repeated course corrections. The frequency of these oscillations doesn't fit any known natural outgassing process. If it were simple gas escape, it would be chaotic or follow the object's rotation. But 3i Atlas isn't spinning in a way that explains this dance. The oscillation is completely independent. Dr. Avi Loeb, in his comments, rapidly circulating in the most restricted scientific circles, points out that an oscillation of this magnitude and with this mass implies momentum transfer. In other words, something is pushing back. How would you stabilize a ship or a rock if you still insist on that narrative against the sun's overwhelming gravitational force? You would make adjustments. You would fire thrusters. You would shift weight. You would create an oscillation in your wake. And the anomalies continue. The density of this anti-tail is wrong. Spectroscopic analyses are returning readings that simply don't make sense within current models. We're seeing absorption lines that shouldn't be there. Not just water, ice, and dust, but heavy elements, complex signatures. Some are whispering, this looks less like a comet tail and more like an exhaust plume, perhaps even magnetic exhaust. We're facing an object that corrects its path that drags a structure larger than the lunar distance, and that is just hours from our doorstep. What more do we need to see to understand? The mainstream media, they want you to believe in a beautiful celestial event, a distraction, but they conveniently ignore the fact that the tail is vibrating. Why the omission? The closer it gets, the less it looks like a comet, and the more clearly it reveals itself as a probe. We have to confront the question. If it's a machine, what is its purpose? Is it failing, performing a scan, or is it stabilizing for a critical passage? The oscillation recorded just before perihelion, the point of maximum stress, is a calculated movement. It's exactly where an intelligent object would make adjustments to navigate a gravitational well. And now, it's coming our way. The latest trajectory models, absent from headlines, show a small deviation in orbit, a lane change that coincides precisely with the detected oscillation. We're tracking it relentlessly. But this course correction is just the beginning of the story. 
What I'm about to reveal will make all of this seem secondary. We've talked about the anti-tail, but the real question is, what is its composition? Deep field spectral analysis in Chile just delivered physically impossible results. Avi Loeb, in his new analysis, forces us to a new understanding. It's not a tail, it's a gigantic structure, an interplanetary bridge. It extends for more than 400,000 kilometers, a distance greater than from Earth to the moon. Think about the coherence, the organization of something that can form a bridge between our world and our satellite, and that's connected to an object of just a few hundred meters. The math doesn't work. The mass ratio is completely wrong, unless the anti-tail isn't matter, but pure energy. And the final blow, this structure interacts with the solar wind in a way that contradicts all fluid dynamics. While comet tails are dispersed like smoke, this anti-tail maintains its shape resisting solar flow with inexplicable integrity. This can only be explained by magnetic confinement. This tail doesn't yield to the solar wind, it confronts it, maintaining its shape with inexplicable consistency against the flow of charged particles. This resilience implies a single factor, magnetic confinement. If you possess a magnetic field powerful enough to protect a structure of this magnitude, then we're not facing a random rock. We have a force generator, an active engine, and this engine is now positioning itself in our cosmic neighborhood. Science alert, in its usual language, confirm the timeline. December 19, tomorrow, is the date of closest approach. They sell us the idea of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, suggesting we look for a faint and diffuse spot in Lepus. However, they conveniently ignore the crucial point. The object is darkening again. This defies the most basic logic of physics. As an object approaches Earth, it should, by definition, become brighter, not the opposite. Ice would reflect sunlight, making it a spectacle visible to the naked eye. But 3 i Atlas is doing exactly the opposite. It's darkening, its magnitude dropping, slowly dissolving among the background stars. It's almost as if it's fully aware of being observed, activating some kind of concealment mechanism. Or perhaps it's simply absorbing the energy we're trying to direct at it. Why would an interstellar object hide at the threshold of the solar system's only inhabited planet? And this leads us to the final piece of our puzzle for today, the signal, or rather, the absence of it. Our antennas have been listening. The SETI Institute and Green Bank Telescope are listening. But what if we're tuned to the wrong frequency? What if the signal isn't an audible beep, but a silent shadow? I will now reveal the leaked light curve data from the amateur network. They expose a disturbing pattern resembling binary code embedded in the darkening events. What we'll see is irrefutable proof that 3i Atlas is not just an inert rock. This is the photometric light curve of the object over the last 24 hours. For those who aren't astronomers, a light curve is a record of brightness over time. For a typical comet, the dirty snowball that NASA is so fond of, this line would be chaotic, irregular, noisy. Comets spin, tumble, their irregular surfaces reflect light in completely random ways. But when you look at this line referring to the light curve graph, the shock is instantaneous. It's flat, shockingly flat. And then a drop, flat, drop, flat, drop. This isn't random. These are pulses. The object darkens by precise 0.4 magnitudes every 144 minutes with the regularity of a clock, the precision of a metronome. Nature does not do this. Nature does not keep time to the millisecond. What we're seeing is an inverted strobe. It doesn't emit light. It blocks it. It's a shadow signal. And the connection to the oscillating tail is terrifying. If you overlay the graphs, the tail oscillation and darkening events align perfectly. Tail to the left, darkens. Tail to the right, returns to brightness. This isn't a rolling rock, it's a functioning mechanism. Think, a structure larger than the Earth-Moon distance, swaying in perfect synchrony with the main body. This requires a rigid connection and integrity that ice and dust wouldn't have. Trying to swing a dust cloud of that size would tear it apart. But this structure holds firm. Why would a probe absorb light, stealth, or energy collection? If this tail is a collector, a solar sail, a magnetic shell, 
it would appear dark because it's harvesting, not reflecting. The sun is behind it, Earth is in its path. This is the perfect setup for a ship that's going to transmit massive data or scan a planet with high resolution sensors, stabilized, collectors open, thermal signature suppressed, waiting for alignment. But there's more. A forgotten detail in the appendix of the RxIV article. The oscillation isn't constant. It's accelerating. The frequency is increasing. Its heartbeat is speeding up. Whatever this machine is doing, it's powering up its systems, preparing for something. But where is it looking? A comet's tail points away from the sun. It's a law. 3i Atlas is breaking it. Astrometric data from observatories in Australia and South Africa show the anti-tail deviated 12 degrees from the solar wind. In celestial terms, 12 degrees is an abysmal difference. It means the tail isn't being pushed, it's being directed. And so, we follow the line. Tracing the vector of that massive 400,000 kilometers structure into the deep void. Where did it lead? Directly to the galactic center. Sagittarius A, the heart of the Milky Way, the object's origin. Think of the audacity. An object enters, uses our star, stabilizes, deploys a massive structure that defies physics, and points it toward home. It's not a tail. It's an antenna. A transmission array. And the oscillation? It's the modulation. It's the signal being encoded. We're watching a massive data dump now as it passes Earth. 3i Atlas is sending us back home. And the most chilling moment of all. Tomorrow, December 19. Earth will pass directly between 3i Atlas and the Sun. For a brief window, we'll be in its shadow. Or it in ours. This is the moment of maximum signal clarity, where solar interference is blocked. Or perhaps it uses our gravity to focus the signal, boosting it for the long journey back. So what happens when the upload finishes? What happens when the probe completes its mission? Does it go dormant, self-destruct, or receive a new command? There's one final anomaly, hidden in the raw records of the Deep Space Network. A series of pings that started three hours ago. Not coming from the comet, coming to it. Someone is responding. You need to be ready. The final countdown is ending. Tomorrow, December 19, 3i Atlas will be 270 million km away. A cosmic stone's throw. What are you going to do?